president attends high-level meetings in D.C. Critics injured in jet ski collision. Building Expo extended to Tuesday. And why can't stand DPR? I am Noriko Boldford, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-615. At the invitation of the U.S. government, a delegation led by the president will be meeting with high-ranking U.S. government officials, including the Secretary of State and leaders of Congress and Senate, to discuss a range of issues to further deepen bilateral relations between Guyana and the United States. U.S. Deputy Commerce Secretary Don Greaves has already agreed to support the government in the areas of banking finance, tourism, and U.S. private sector investment into Guyana. A diaspora meeting has also been planned for Guyanese living in the D.C. area. The government members of the Parliamentary Public Accounts Committee have skipped this Monday's meeting for a third week in a row. It was expected that the issue over attempts to merge the 2019 and 2020 Auditor General reports would have been discussed at today's statutory meeting, but never happened because the government members skipped it without warning. Meanwhile, all opposition parliamentarians on the committee did arrive, with the exception of Ganesh Mahipal, who is currently suspended from Parliament. According to Starbrick News, Mr. Su Ji Rong has been missing since mid-February. He also reportedly resigned from the Association of Chinese Enterprises, a local business group. However, this was well before Jack Deal threatened to sue him for libel over a month ago. Even though Mr. Sue has been gone for months, back in April, Jack Dio said that Sue had seemingly abandoned his home, but he'd already paid his rent up until the end of May. On Sunday afternoon, critics' water sport escapades landed him and another man in the hospital after their jet skis collided with each other at Bartica Region 7. According to the police, there were no serious injuries and both men have since been discharged from the hospital. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's Car of the Week. Currently on sale is the 2016 Suzuki Jimmy Sierra four-wheel drive. It comes with regular and low-range four-wheel drive, mug rims, new tires, TV, CD, fog lamps, bar camera, and much, much more. Buy cash for $3.4 million. All payers owe is $700,000 down with around $67,000 monthly for five years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the showrooms in Lot 171 Peter Roche, Queen Sound. Or Lot 2 Lamar Street. And tell them we sent you for this sweet deal. A 45-year-old security guard employed with CMC Reliable Security Service was arrested on Sunday afternoon after he negligently shot three persons in a poor attempt to stop a disorderly customer at the Good Luck Supermarket at Turkine, Greater Georgetown. The disorderly customer, 27-year-old Jamal Bruce, 22-year-old delivery man Joshua Mentor, and another bystander, 28-year-old Treat Non Liverpool, were injured by the guard's indiscriminate shooting. All three men were admitted to the hospital in a stable condition. On Friday, gold miners 42-year-old Troy Scott and 32-year-old Sian Martin died in the nation's latest fatal workplace accident. The pit they were working on collapsed on them in the Kamung Bakdam, Peruni, Region 7. Nearby workers managed to escape and pull the two miners from the pit, but the two died before receiving medical treatment. The Labour Ministry is expected to open an investigation into the incident shortly. On Sunday morning, 21-year-old Dale Nelson died at the Linden Hospital Complex hours after being involved in a hit-and-run accident on the Amelia's Ward Public Road. Nelson was the pillar rider on a motorcycle which was being driven by 18-year-old Julian Graham. Graham is currently hospitalized in a stable condition. Meanwhile, officers have recovered the vehicle after it was abandoned a short distance away from the scene. Over in the diaspora, 46-year-old Shem Monroe died on Friday afternoon during a head-on collision with a sleeping driver on a highway in Coriel County, Texas. The two drivers were taken to the hospital. However, the 58-year-old driver who crashed into Monroe was admitted with non-life-threatening injuries. Due to the overwhelming response for the International Building Expo, the organizers have decided to extend the event until tomorrow evening. Housing Minister Colin Kroll said admission for the extended two days will be free. The expo at the National Stadium in Providence will be open from midday to 10 p.m. on both days. The expo opened on Friday and was due to close yesterday. Guyanese are known for many things, and cheapness is one of them. Thankfully, you could be cheap and still get high-quality DAF, International, Freightliner, 
Bedford TM, or Scammell Tripods for low prices at Powered Automotive. Visit them at Lot 1161 EE Eccles or call them on telephone number 6970171. Save big on Tripods at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy duty Tripod store in Guyana. Now for today's oil update. Rystad Energy said that Guyana's oil earnings are projected to go from US $1 billion this year to US $7.5 billion by 2030, with the nation expected to become the world's fourth largest offshore oil producer in the world by 2035, with over 1.7 million barrels of oil produced per day. By then, the accomplishment is made even more significant when you consider that after 20 years of producing oil, Guyana is expected to rake in a total of $157 billion US by 2040. Now for our stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? The Department of Public Information. I understand that the government has a message and it wants to get it across, but by now it should be obvious that DPI is just a poorly run propaganda outlet for the government of the day. Worse yet, they aren't even good at the job. While the government is giving their media workers some of the best equipment out there, many of them don't even know how to use it. Or when they do know how to use it, the content they create itself is just unwatchable. It's terrible. I mean, seriously, look at their numbers on social media and then compare it to other news entities, including us. Why are we spending hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars each year to be subjected to such assaults to our collective intelligence? Since the mainstream media is biased enough, do we really need to spend our hard-earned money on more poorly produced propaganda? I think the government needs to drop DPI and just give proper support to the individual ministerial public relations departments. Better yet, they need to just be more honest about the information they feel is important enough to tell the public. Because this current dispensation, even under the new leader, Eddie Lane, is pretty stupid. It might not be robbery season, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business through Sheriff Security Service. Sheriff Security offers well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrol, K-9 services. These people even got drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest, now hire the best. Hire Sheriff Security Service today. Now for our uncut news, viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it this to us. On Friday, I asked if the state should pay off Lyndon's debt considering the fact that we have so many billions coming in from the oil industry. Burford Wanderer says, why not pay off the Lyndon debt? Audit the books and evaluate where they went wrong. Then assist them in assessing the funds coming in and what's going out so they can balance their books. It's probably easier said than done. Maybe, but the idea makes sense. In fact, Andy Anderson agrees. He says they should pay the debts. Then, after a good amount of auditing and correcting for any discrepancies, they should update the old system or else it's back to square one. Exactly, pay it off and then fix the system. Lorem Ipsum says, if the claims by Lyndon are true, the national government should help them. If the central government shares responsibility for the shortfall, why shouldn't they pay back out of the windfall? Other towns in like situation should be included too. Indeed, I agree with that. And in fact, Joseph Winslow also agrees. He suggests that a percentage of the oil money should go to all city municipalities in Guyana because we need equity and fairness in the distribution of the oil money if we want peace in our land. You are absolutely correct. Wealth inequality, corruption, and political instability go hand in hand. So, before we get to tonight's question, you can multiply your cash by selling Digital Top Up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a Top Up vendor quick and easy by linking with Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685-3109 for more info. Now for tonight's question. Did you go to the building expo? And if so, how did you feel about it? Frankly, I thought it was a nice concept, but I had a few issues with the execution. But that's just me. So I want you to think about that question. Tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. And check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Nuri Kopelford saying goodnight, folks.